I remember listening to it several times and then uh, when I was sleeping at night, I think I was dreaming about this album. Mommy Heads, yeah, I've not heard of them. They are uh, a new band to me, although this is their 15th album. I forget now how I, I kind of found out that this album, there was some prog connection in this band. These guys are, um, they have some prog roots for sure. And you can hear it a little bit through the album. That's why I call it indie prog pop, because my impression listening to it, it felt kind of indie rock, you know? Um, and what does that mean? Indie rock to me is like, a band that is um, on their own, they don't have a record company uh, lording over them, watching their every move, uh, measuring their every penny spent or whatever. They just do this on their own, so it has a kind of a free, unedited kind of feeling. Although I'm sure they do edit themselves. I mean, it's not a junkily uh, or poorly recorded album. It's pretty high caliber as far as the production. Um, the musicianship, of course. I mean, they've been together that many years. They've performed many shows. Or, or as they say, their tagline on X, also formerly known as Twitter, is we've played thousands of shows to hundreds of people. <laughs> I've not heard that quote before. But that is so true and too true for too many bands who, who should not suffer this fate, especially since there's great talent and great quality songwriting going on. Anyways, this album, you know, it could appeal to... Um, XTC fans, that's one of my sort of assumptions. I mean, when I hear, listen to it, it's kind of reminded me of the Neil Morse band, even, for some reason. This Neil Morse band is somewhat new to me. Um, it reminded me a little of um, Genesis, a 1974, thanks to uh, some bass work um, that reminded me of Michael Rutherford's crunchy Rickenbacker bass that he used on, you know, 1974 Genesis, Selling England by the pound no no that wasn't that the double album um you know which one i mean anyways so but that's enough for comparisons i mean there's a little beatlesque-ness to them i'm just trying to give you some impressions what you what to expect with this band they're very songwriter focused for sure uh i don't think there's any instrumentals but certainly they have lots of instrumental passages throughout the, the album they even have a, a song like for example it's called onset onset ma uh, which is a uh, very uh, lots of a, a big touch a big brush up with jazz like it's some real jazzy flavors there is a sort of a new york city grit to, to their music i don't know if that's tangible if it's just me or what but it does there is a certain new york city kind of vibe a certain feel that uh, i kind of it, it seems tangible to me about this band so it's really, really strong songwriting. And that's the thing. It's, it's really not simple stuff. This, their songs are very complex. The, the songwriting is done very subtly. And, and there's just a changes in key. There's just unexpected twists and turns throughout the entire album. And it really, because of that, it keeps really fresh. Uh, it, keeps, uh, it keeps you guessing. This, uh, the musicianship is great. Everyone in the band is, is really good. Uh, basically, it's a it's kind of a, a regular kind of a setup for a band, right? It's like um, uh, keyboards, uh, good bass, guitar, singing, and drums. The uh, keyboard does have um, a big role to play. Uh, the synthesizer in particular, you know, uh, but also there's a lot of uh, acoustic kind of touches in these songs. I mean, you're not going to hear any Marshall stacks if you're, if you're looking for that. You won't hear that here. You'll hear a lot of uh, sort of a steel string, like a, some, oh, I don't know if he's using a Dober guitar. There's maybe a mandolin used. There's of course electric guitar, but there's also the six string, which is kind of a big part of some of the songs. The singer has a voice that, um, it's really, high quality voice and i was trying to figure it out well who can you compare him to and I, the first thing that kind of pops in my head kind of like like, like don mclean you know american pie but not quite I, could not, I don't know why i compare it to that a bit his voice is very pleasant i enjoy i enjoy listening to it maybe the more i listen to it i will get used to the uh, or or start to catch on to what's really distinct about his singing so they were assigned to Geffen Records at one point in the 90s, I think it was. And uh, obviously they, they only did the one record, so they were quote-unquote dropped. I don't know. But I went and had a quick look, and it wasn't for lack of critical acclaim. They were getting acclaim from some uh, all these uh, 
high place um, places, you know, like New York Times and, and all this, uh, you know, when you hear them, you know this band has really worked hard. Um, you don't get signed to Geffen if you're not uh, if you're not working hard uh, for your career, you know. So, um, so it seems they're back to being independent. And uh, well, you know, I mean, if you look at the whole music industry, how everything has changed and how the dominant kind of music is not rock anymore. Rock is not dominant, and this band is uh, largely a rock, indie rock kind of band. So. Um, that's just the way it is right now. So, do I recommend you check this out? I absolutely do. I, I had a good, I've, I have good feelings about this album, uh, as far as an album, listening to an album and how it makes you feel, you know, how it, Im it imparts a, fe a feeling or a flavor to you. I remember listening to it several times, and then, uh, when I was sleeping at night, I think I was dreaming about this album. And for some reason, it's just really, really positive nice feeling which is interesting because um if you look at the album cover um my first impression of the album cover was i was spooked out a bit you got a little child there and she's sitting at coney island uh and um on these uh sort of a ride and of course this this coney island is like i don't know 150 years old or more so they have probably all these antique kind of things they have all these ghoulish stuff carvings and wood and scary stuff actually and it looks like it's a it's one of this more maybe the haunted tunnel she was going to go in right as i got to know the album uh in the same way that the, my impression of the cover change i started to see not all these scary creatures but it's just seeing her expression which she wasn't afraid she just looks calm and just sort of ready to explore whatever is going to happen going down this uh ride and she's pretty cute actually so i think the the fact that the album is called uh, the mommy heads i mean the band is called the mommy heads i mean that's kind of a funny name in a way too right uh, and then seeing the little kid there and uh, it's just a cute cover now so why did my impression of the album art change so drastically that's interesting so what was my score? Okay, the Prog Dog score for Coney Island Kid by the Mommy Heads is a solid, very solid 4 out of 5 bones. It's inventively written, creatively produced, well performed. The singer, he's, he was performing really well. He's a good singer. <coughs> he puts a lot of his uh, great emotion into the singing and uh, irony and other, other things too. It's... Um, it's a whole palette of a kind of expressions. Um, sorry, I don't have too much to say about lyrics. I'm not really into lyrics a lot. I mean, I love lyrics when when I do look at them, but it's just not my focus. So I, I leave that to other channels to set of you know, specialists who want to mo comment on the lyrics, but that they seem pretty good to me, anyways. So it's inventively written, creatively produced, and performed, full of pragmatic groove and mature. Verve, <laughs> mature verve. Anyone searching for an intelligent, catchy music that grabs you on the first listen, what are you waiting for? If you haven't already, leave a little thumbs up. Check out my other reactions and uh, album reviews. I do both types of things: album reviews and written reviews. Prog Dog CA is my uh, blog for writing all of these reviews. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. There's a playlist of more stuff spiraling out. As Dean, talk to you later. Bye.